time, I'm going to invite Jay and Abby to come forward from the Gleaning Project, and they're going to be uh, giving us a demonstration about the Gleaning Project. So they're going to take their place here at one of the other podiums, whichever one they determine, and they're going to give us a presentation. And then uh, I've also informed them during our gathering time, uh, they're going to be hanging out down there. If we have any kind of questions or anything like that, we can talk with uh, the folks then. So at this time, you guys got it. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your introduction, Pastor Bob. It's nice to be here. Um, like he said, um, my name's Abby, and this is my coworker Jay, and um, we are just so excited to be here this morning and share with you all a little bit about the Gleaning Project that you're going to be working with uh, this week. And so I was actually going to give a little bit of context regarding scripture and gleaning, but he did a way better job at that than I would have ever done with the children's sermon. So um, I'm going to skip that a little bit, but as you guys know, it usually people know the term gleaning if they're um, from church from the book of ruth um, that's when people are mostly familiar with the term so gleaning is still going on today um, it's a pretty similar concept really to what was going on in bible times except it's not really part of our law like it was for the hebrews um, but it is still something that can happen where if there's excess on farms um, the gleaners us, you guys, people who are interested in doing this, will go out in the fields and get the excess food, and then it can go to those in need. Um, we'll get more to kind of the logistics of how all of gleaning works. Um, we'll do that in just a little bit, but uh, just a little bit of context about me, my background. I'm from Franklin County. I grew up in Chambersburg, actually. My family is from here in Greencastle. They grew up here and um, went to school in Chambersburg, graduated high school there, went out to Indiana for school. I went to Taylor University. It's a small Christian school out there. And then after that, I um, moved to Chicago. And I lived there for the past six years, met my husband out there, and we moved back here um, just a few months ago, really. But while I was living in Chicago, um, I learned a lot. <laughs> you guys probably hear about Chicago on the news. Every time I tell somebody I lived in Chicago, they're like, oh, Chicago. You know, and it's like this, um, it's this other world, you know? Um, and I will say that while there was beautiful, amazing, wonderful things about living in Chicago, I loved living and working there. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of differences between there and here. Um, there's a lot of, I guess you could say need everywhere you look. Um, a lot of neighborhoods in Chicago struggle with violence. I was blessed to live in a neighborhood that, that wasn't that way. But I did have several like homeless shelters and soup kitchens in my neighborhood. And, and every weekend, you would see people lining up out the door to get food at these places. Um, you, wouldn't be able, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't go far walking down a sidewalk without running into somebody who was in need, who was asking for help on the street. You know, Every day, I was kind of confronted with that reality in Chicago that there's need here. Um, and to be honest, when I thought about moving back to Franklin County, I thought about my childhood and how, how great it was and the people I know here, and I didn't really consider necessarily the fact that there's still need here in Franklin County. Um, I was just excited about moving back, and I didn't really think about all of that. Um, when I was looking for a job here, I looked for something that met my passions and my interests, and then when I found the Gleaning Project, I had a lot of thoughts. I've had a lot of excitement. I was like, great, nonprofit work. I've done that. Um, I get to meet new people. I get to work in the community. Awesome. Um, I get to help reduce food waste, and I help increase food security. That's part of our motto. We reduce food waste and increase food security. Um, but that last term, food security, or better, better known as food insecurity, um, I wasn't really sure what that was. Um, and maybe you guys don't know either, um, but it basically means when someone is lacking access to enough food for them to live an active and healthy life. Um, and it actually affects a lot more people um, in this country than you might think. Um, to find out how many people actually struggle with food insecurity in this country, um, the USDA had a survey screener kind of thing that happened at hospitals and doctor's offices where they would ask people as they were doing intake um, three questions regarding food and hunger. And those questions are up there on the screen. I'll read them aloud for you. It says, in the last year, did you worry whether your food would run out before you got money to buy more? Did you rely on only a few kinds of low-cost food to feed your children because you were running out of money to buy food? Did you ever skip a meal or cut the size of your own portion so that your children could eat? 
That last one gets me. Um, I'm going to just hold the slide there just for a second. Um, I just want you guys to think about how maybe you would answer those questions. Maybe you've been in a place where you've had to answer yes to one or more of those questions. Um, but whenever I saw the number of people that answered yes to one or more of those questions, I was completely shocked. Um, the number, you guys can flip to the next screen, is 50 million people in this country struggled with hunger within the last year. That turns out to actually be one in seven adults Sorry. and one in five children. So you think, okay, it's across the country, that's probably in places like Chicago. But in fact, it's actually, that actually translates here to Franklin County as well. Um, so here in Franklin County, we still have one in seven adults and one in five kids who are food insecure. Um, we can see that in Chambersburg Area School District, if you look at the statistics, 50% of students, it says there, um, in Chambersburg Area are eligible for free or reduced lunches, which just means that um, it, they need to supplement their meals with free or reduced lunches at school. Um, and then it means that their family falls within the federal poverty income guidelines. And then we have two elementary schools in Chambersburg where 100% of their student population is, is, in, is eligible for that free or reduced lunch. There are several reasons which contribute to this, um, but one of the biggest is uh, high cost of living in the area and low wage jobs. Um, in Franklin County, the single parent with two kids has to work 3.2 minimum wage jobs to cover basic living expenses. 3.2 minimum wage jobs, that is a lot of work, <laughs> especially if you have two kids to take care of at the same time. So yes, um, hunger and food insecurity are still very much an issue in our area. And um, when I learned all that, I was very excited to be working with the Gleaning Project to take a small part in um, finding a solution to that. And Jay's actually gonna go over here just now why uh, Franklin County is so ripe, if you excuse the pun, uh, for gleaning, so. Yeah, absolutely. So we really like puns at the Gleaning Project um, <laughs> and rhyming. That's why the Glean Machine exists. Um, can we go to the next slide? Um, so there is hope. And, and in Franklin County, we really have a special opportunity because we live in such a bountiful place. Um, so I'm sure that, that folks out uh, in the audience um, know about hunger and know about poverty and have friends and family members or people in their lives that are dealing with that. Um, and we also um, have in our lives uh, some of the most bountiful farmland in the entire country. So in Franklin County, there's about 1,500 acres of land that actually has vegetables growing on it right now. Um, it's probably more than that. That's a 2012 USDA census number. Um, so 1,500 acres have vegetables on them. Um, if you guys drive around Franklin County, you probably see a lot more different stuff popping up, a lot more rows of plastic. Um, a lot of the German Baptist growers are now growing all kinds of stuff like bell peppers and eggplant. If you head towards Waynesboro, um, if you go up towards Shippensburg, you see a lot more of this kind of, this kind of land use. Um, let's see, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, so, so when I look at those poverty numbers and those hunger numbers, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and this is a picture of, uh, of one of our volunteers, John Raber. Um, he's got so much kale in his hands, uh, he's kind of making it rain with kale. Um, Franklin County is the number two most vegetable producing county in the entire state. So Lancaster is number one in terms of vegetable production. Franklin County is, is, one of, is number two. Um, and I think that's something that we should all uh, know and be really proud of, that that's, um, that's our home. Um, Adams County right next door, the Gleaning Project works in both Franklin County and Adams County. Adams County is one of the top five apple producing counties in the entire country. So here in South Central Pennsylvania, um, we have a really special opportunity, and that's why the Gleaning Project of South Central Pennsylvania exists. Um, so, next slide. Uh, and next slide, please. This is probably my favorite kind of gleaning. Um, I love working with volunteers. This is so much easier on your back, just gonna <laughs> say. Um, we can go to the next slide. And this is just some of the kind of bounty that we're pulling in. This was September of last year. This is a free produce stand um, in Chambersburg. So there's apples, cauliflower, uh, there's a winter squash, two kinds of winter squash there on the bottom. There are sweet peppers on the top and potatoes on the right-hand side. So pretty close to the produce that came out of the bag. And it, in Franklin County, it really is almost as easy as that. Uh, next slide, please. 
So the reason this food exists um, is because most farms, especially those that are growing fruit or vegetables, have about 20% food loss. And that's the technical term, kind of like food insecurity, um, that defines food that gets grown on a farm, but for whatever reason doesn't get off the farm. So this isn't stuff that, um, that consumers have on their plates or in their refrigerators. This is 20% of the food that gets grown on that 1,500 acres of land in Franklin County doesn't get off the farm. Um, and that's an approximate number, that's a, and that's an average. There's a lot of reasons. Um, when I say that number, a lot of people kind of roll their eyes back in their head because it's such a high number. Um, farming is a business, and, and anyone that has 20% food loss in a business uh, is, is probably messing up somewhere. It's not a very efficient business. That's the way that agriculture works, though. So this food loss exists because um, because growing produce is very difficult and there are pests and there are weather events that come and make food not quite high enough quality to be able to sell. Um, food is a natural thing. It doesn't grow the way that we want it to all the time. So sometimes it's too small, sometimes it's too large. Um, and that's what ac accumulates into this 20% of food. So in Franklin County, there's more or less 20% of 1,500 acres of fruits and vegetables um, that are for the taking, that, that the Gleaning Project really could um, and is working to try and figure out how to take advantage of and move to people that can't afford food in the first place. Um, so I think we'll go back to Abby. Next slide, please. Yeah. <clears throat> so the Gleaning Project um, is just saving those fruits and vegetables from going to waste, and then we're getting that food to people who's in, who are Excellent. in need. Um, I like to think of it like this. Um, we're solving one problem with the other problem. Uh, so we have this tremendous uh, percentage of food loss, and then we have a high percentage of food insecurity and hunger. And we're just bringing the two things together and helping um, alleviate some of those issues. Um, our mission statement says that the Gleaning Project is a community solution to reduce food loss and improve food security in South Central Pennsylvania. The two words I love the most out of that uh, phrase is community and solution. Um, that just means that the Gleaning Project is not me and Jay. <laughs> it's not the staff members that make it up. It is made up of hundreds of different individuals who want to see this dream become reality. Um, I think we have a slide up there that is just a list of all of our community partners. Um, and it, it spans from boys and girls clubs who take advantage of this produce and give it to people, um, the students that, that come to their clubs. Um, it's Antrim, Brethren in Christ, down the road, who has a food pantry every weekend, I think, and uh, is just giving out some of this produce to those people. It's also our farmers, like Jay was talking about, the people that grow the food, that let us come on their farm and, and um, harvest it. And then it's hundreds of volunteers who help do that backbreaking labor sometimes. Um, but they, a lot of them are driving food from um, one place to another, just helping it get across the county. Um, some of them are... Um, helping to come glean like you guys are going to do or helping to preserve the food so that when we have an abundance of sweet corn it can turn into frozen corn that can last through the winter. Um, so it's just hundreds of volunteers, it's hundreds of people that work at these community partners as we call them and then it's all the farmers as well. Um, so it's just such a community effort and it wouldn't exist without all of those people. Um, I like to say it's such a simple idea, you know, the two problems coming together and solving one another, but it's such a complex network of people who are like, oh, I know someone over here who can use it and I know this person will help it get over there. Um, and it's just such a cool web to see um, people that just want to show up and care and give a little bit of their time to see this happen. Um, so Jay's going to talk a little bit about the way that this has happened in the years past and where we want to go in the future. Yep, so one of my favorite things about gleaning, and we go to the next slide, please, um, and, and our jobs, uh, is that it's such beautiful work. Um, so we're just going to look at a couple pretty pictures. <laughs> this, is, uh, this was a cherry tomato glean at Fulton Farm at Wilson College last year. Uh, there's about 120 quarts of cherry tomatoes there that I think two, four, about eight volunteers picked in about an hour um, because there's so many cherry tomatoes on those plants. Um, and we also all had very full bellies full of cherry tomatoes. Um, next slide, please. This was an apple glean on a Saturday morning. It's a, it might be a little difficult to see. The, the kids are standing in front of the crates. Um, so the, that gray wall is just a wall of over 2,000 pounds of apples that about 35 volunteers picked in about an hour. Um, so each one of those crates has about 40 to 50 pounds of apples in them. 
And that's a big wall. Um, that's a really, really big wall. <laughs> Next slide, please. Uh, this is from Tracy's Orchards, just, uh, I guess, in Wayne Castle. Um, so Ed and, T and Tanya donate bulk bins of apples that are going to go to juicing. So, so occasionally these apples don't quite pass muster. Um, they could sometimes be turned into apple juice, um, or, or the, the Tracy's donate them to the Gleaning Project so we can move them to folks in need. Next slide, please. This is the largest, probably the largest organic vegetable farm in Franklin County. This is Lady Moon Farms. Um, which is one of the larger organic farms on the entire East Coast, just out in St. Thomas. That wall of green, uh, those crates are completely full of seconds beets. So each one of those crates is about 60 pounds full of beets. Uh, and these are beets that are a little too small, um, maybe a little oblong. They look more like eggs than they do like, um, you know, like lacrosse balls. And the grocery stores that Lady Moon sells to do not want egg-shaped beets. They want perfect beets. So this stack of beets was you know, about two hours on their um, harvesting line, and, and they have acres of beets like this. So this took, I didn't have any volunteers this day, this took, it took me about an hour and a half to process that wall of white boxes on the right-hand side. Um, but if we had just one or two volunteers, we could do it either twice as fast or we could get twice as much food. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the largest conventional farm in Franklin County. This is Benedict's Produce. Um, that's in Duffield. That's where their home farm is. This is a, probably the the biggest um, German Baptist farm in, in Franklin County. And then if you go up 81, their farm, if <clears throat> kind of right between the Walker Road exit and the, the Chambersburg Mall, if you're going north, you look off to the right-hand side, you just see acres and acres of, of peppers and squash and tomatoes. Um, that's all Benedict stuff. So here we, we went to their packing house with about six volunteers. Each one of these um, white bins in the picture on the right-hand side is full of cauliflower about 400 pounds of cauliflower each, and the cauliflower is a little yellow because the sun got to it, uh, and the grocery store didn't want that slightly yellowed cauliflower because people buying cauliflower in the store want perfect white cauliflower. The cauliflower is perfect. We had six volunteers. We processed it, put it into these boxes, um, and this is our cooler completely full of about, uh, I don't know, 1,100 pounds of cauliflower uh, with about an hour's worth of work. Next slide, please. This is a corn glean. Um, this is what I hope you guys can participate in on Tuesday. So there's about 43 volunteers that showed up. We harvested over 2,000 pounds of sweet corn in an hour. Um, it's really just up the road at Country Creek Produce Farm, and it's a pretty good time. Um, I would highly encourage you guys to come. Uh, next slide. These are cherry tomatoes at Lady Moon Farms. I can go on for a long time. I won't, um, but the work that we do really is um, it, there really is that much food out there, uh, and, and the Gleaning Project is just trying to um, make the most of it. Next slide. So each one of those green crates is, is full of about 60 pounds of cherry tomatoes, and, um, and there were a lot more pallets uh, right behind the camera. Next slide. Uh, this was a potato glean. So that picture very early where there were a lot of kids with, with white buckets, they were harvesting these 2,000 pounds of potatoes at Bender's Potato Farm. Next slide. And watermelon gleans, um, probably the most fun glean that we have. This is also at Country Creek Produce Farm. Um, there's, there's nothing like a watermelon glean. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, and this is, I think this is probably the last picture. So these are spaghetti squash at Benedict's Produce Farm. Um, each, each little bit of yellow is a, is a Nerf-sized football of spaghetti squash, and grocery stores right now really want uh, NFL-sized footballs of spaghetti squash, um, which, is, which is interesting because a lot of people don't want a spaghetti squash that, that, that is that big, so these are, these are more like personal-sized spaghetti squash. And Benedict's could not sell their personal-sized spaghetti squash, so they had, um, a, there's at least four acres of spaghetti squash there that are just sitting on the field waiting for the frost to, um, to ruin them. Um, so this is the kind of stuff that the Gleaning Project is getting out to get and then moving as quickly as possible to community partner locations all over the county. Um, so that's what we've been doing. Those are some pretty pictures of, of kind of where we've been. Uh, this year we're just getting started now and we will be out doing this kind of stuff uh, every week from now until Thanksgiving. Um, so we appreciate your time for listening um, and really appreciate having us here. It was really wonderful to be invited. Um, and we invite you back to, um, to come out and glean or to work with the Gleaning Project however you see fit, however it can fit in your life.